Welcome to Festsaal Kreuzberg, where I'm with Marcos from POD or Payable on Debt. So first of all, welcome to Berlin and how are you today? I'm doing great, man. Uh, I'm enjoying the energy and the vibrations of the city, man. So I got up early and cruised around town and got to hang with some locals at a coffee shop. Went to the Ramones Museum, which was really awesome. So, you know, I can't complain. Uh, yeah, we talked earlier and you mentioned it has a bit of a New York vibe. Uh, energy wise, as far as structural, uh, I, it's different, obviously. Um, you know, with the graffiti and the people on the streets, all the different cultures, it's, it's definitely got that kind of uh, energy for sure. Okay, let's go to the tour. You are touring Europe at the moment. Mm -hmm. So how has it gone so far and any memorable moments there? You know what, man? We, we have not been disappointed. We have been extremely happy with the turnouts and the fans and people just being excited about the band and about the songs. And uh, it's, it's definitely a pleasure coming over here, man, because, uh, you know, there's definitely some hunger for the POD out here. Yeah, for the last year you have uh, toured actually a lot. Mm -hmm. So what makes, you know, geeks so special that, you know, you are ready to do it year round almost? Well, luckily, when we first signed our record, big major record deal, deal, our first one with Atlantic Records, we were wise enough to consciously make a decision to become a band worldwide, not just focus on the U.S., we would do the U.S., but we would go to Europe, or we would go to Asia, we would go to Latin America, just because we knew we can't just count on one one market, and we want we want to have fans worldwide. And you know, sometimes we slack and don't go to certain markets, and people are like, "Why don't you come back here?" Um, like we were saying, I've n we've never been to Finland our whole our whole career, and we are always asking ourselves, "I don't know why we've never been to Finland." We see fans online, come to Finland, I'm disappointed you didn't come to Finland. They'll see it, you know, or they'll come see us in Norway or in Sweden and, and I don't know. I mean, there's markets that we haven't hit, like on this tour, we've never hit before. We're, we, we've never played the Czech Republic, Prague, and both of the shows in the Czech Republic are sold out. We've never played Hungary, sold out. So we're just like, okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I hope you can visit Finland. We would in love future. to, man. If there's any promoters, <laughs> you know, POD is willing to come to Finland. Yeah, like you said, I think the fans have gone to Stockholm to see yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you are touring at the moment with Alien Ant Farm. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of touring partner is that band? Not, you know, not a new partner for <laughs> touring for you, but. Well, there's a lot of parallels between the bands because we're both from Southern California. We're from San Diego, they're from Riverside, which is an hour north of San Diego. And just culturally, custom-wise, uh, energy, um, you know, sound, um, style, we understand each other. Um, and uh, they're good guys, and we appreciate what they do. They're good tour mates, they're fun to be around. And uh, we've done, we were talking about, we've done a lot of miles together, South America, this is our third European tour together. You know, we've done the States together. Uh, we were like, well, I guess we haven't done Australia, so let's do that next, you know? And it works. I think the fan base comes out and they're like, I remember both of these bands. I want to go to that show, you know? So they're, they're, they're uh, stand-up guys and uh, they're like family, man. Okay, uh, let's talk about your music then. Uh, mm -hmm. Circle came out about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on the album now that you have played it to audiences? Um, I'm loving it, man. I think it's P.O.D. with new energy. Um, and that was what we were going for. The producers that we worked with, the heavy, uh, we brought them in with that in mind. like. We don't want someone to try to change us and make us something that we're not. We just wanted to bring somebody in that was gonna kind of add the vibes and the and the energy and the sounds that we were looking for, but not change the band's com sound completely. So I think it has a really fresh, vibrant sound. And I think it's transcending live. We play a lot of those songs live, so. Okay, and how do you see the evolution of POD's music through the years? Well, I didn't see us being here today. I mean, 27, 28 years later, 
And man, we're the old guys on the block now. We've seen trends, fads come and go. You know, oh, they're, these bands are hot now and we're like a freight train. We just keep chugging along and we're there. Oh yeah, there's POD. Yeah, man. We're a true blue collar style rock and roll band, man. We work, we love our fans and we play hard, man. Um, yeah, how would you categorize POD's music today? You, uh, you were, you came to know, to be known uh, in the 2000s maybe as a new metal band. Does mm -hmm. that, uh, what are your thoughts on new metal today? It's funny, man, because the human brain needs to put a name on something. If it's not new metal, it's Christian band. If it's not Christian band, it's uh, rap core. If it's not rap core, it's alternative metal and, and I, for us it's just music that we decided to create that we felt from our souls man like we started like a lot of bands in the garage and we just grew we became better musicians together and we just started to play a lot of shows and it started to grow and the evolution just started to happen slowly but we saw it at a young age we go to a city in the states and the first time there'd be you know 10 15 20 people there Then we come back on another tour and there's two, three hundred people there. And then we go back for a third time and it's, oh man, there's a thousand people here and we don't have a record deal. We're just selling CDs out of our out of our van. So we've always seen that progression. And then once we got into the major leagues, uh, we had to kind of, you know, filter out what it was we wanted to be as a band because everyone thinks that they know everything in the music industry. You guys got to be like this and you guys are like... Dude, we're POD, and we people love our band because that's that's exactly who we are, and we don't want to lose that. So we always try to stay true to what we are, and that's a Southern California band that has roots in reggae, punk, metal, pop, and hip hop and rap, dude. But we don't force it; it's just a natural thing for us. We hear bands trying to force it, and we're like, oof. That sounds that sounds contrived. That sounds fa fake. For us, it just happened naturally because we listen to so many different styles of music, and we're like, "Dude, let's jam to this." That sounds cool, you know. You know, and it just happens organically, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, there seems to be a newfound appreciation to new metal nowadays. So now is maybe a good time to reminisce a bit about that time because at the time in early 2000s, you were in in the like first row when uh, when it really got big and you were one of the biggest bands so yeah. did it feel like special then or what was the feeling back then did you kind of know that this was happening well i mean it's exciting yeah. it's a very exciting thing especially at a young age you're like wow people like what we're doing and people are showing up to the shows and they're going crazy you know and they're singing every lyric it's it's just, it's exciting man but you know as a band The way we were brought up, we always were taught to keep it in perspective, to stay humble, to, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated and basically write music that inspires and gives hope and bring a little light into the darkness, man. Kind of like the Santanas, the U2s, the Bob Marleys, but with what we do. Yeah. Did you realize back today that you were actually a big part of this new sound that was yes. coming. Yeah. Yes, man, we, we did, we realized it, but it's like a hurricane, man. When you're when that hurt storm is going on, you're in the middle of it and you're just kind of numb, like, wow, this is happening. And then once it kind of passes and you're like, wow, dude, I can't believe it. You, you still look back and and trip out on how many lives you affected worldwide different cultures, people that don't even speak English. As soon as I hit that guitar note on Youth of the Nation, I don't care if you speak English or you're from, you know, Singapore or, you know, Latin America, Sao Paulo, Brazil, they connect with it and they know the lyrics and they sing along and you're like, wow, that's powerful, man. Okay, and uh, for every trend, of course, there's uh, kind of a backlash when it kind of draws to end so uh there was also a backlash to new metal and it was mm -hmm. a bit hazy that time so how do you remember that time how did it feel uh did it connect with pod at all or you know what's funny man we, we i don't think i mean if you listen to our songs that made it they're just hard rock songs 
we weren't doing the new metal like we weren't doing that we were doing deep grooves with big choruses because of the bands that we were influenced by like i said the u2s the chili peppers you know that th those types of bands we were like man we what do i love about when i go see a band i love that i if, whether it's punk rock whether it's, that i can go there and sing along so you know i don't really feel personally that we're just this new metal band but people if they want us to be cool man you want us to be your new metal band we are your new metal band dude you want us to be this band or that band fine but as long as you listen to the music and we are giving you hope my my job our job as a band is done okay yeah let's bring it back closer to pod so yeah. what's in the future you know we take it one day at a time you know we signed this deal with mascot it's a european label and uh circles is the first record and uh, we're gonna kind of see what what this you know the future holds we we feel that we have two more singles on this record um but the politics and money and all this stuff's like we'll we'll see if they ever come out but uh it's hard man because i guess from what i've gathered here in europe there isn't like in the states there's rock stations in different cities from what I've gathered, there's like rock stations for a country. Oh, the UK has one rock station that plays everything for the whole country, Italy. And I'm like, that is a trip, man. Because for us, there's satellite radio for the whole country. And then every city has its rock station. So, and what I gather is that electronic music is a big deal here. So rock, I mean, pop and electronic is the big music. Rock kind of takes a step back and you know it's not a priority so we just have to do what we do and hopefully that the, our biggest friend is the internet it's like check out our music man and we notice it spotify apple music amazon people come to the shows and they're singing it and we're like dude this isn't even on the radio and people singing this song that's awesome you know yeah how has it actually been to you know live through the changes and revolution in music in the industry it's frustrating because it's a business and any business has a bottom line bottom line means we need to make money and this executive suits that's all they care about they don't care about the personal life they don't care about the artists they just cool cool man sell a lot of records make a lot of money and we're like hey man we get that it's called the music business for a reason but dude we have a lot of heart a lot of soul and pod likes to wear its heart on its sleeve man you know uh yeah um like you already said that you uh live day by day with the band but uh, do you already have uh have you jammed or is there uh, like a feeling what direction your music might take next well for us man um kirk cobain said it best I don't care if you have two trash cans psh, 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 crashing against each other, but if you have a great melody on top, you know what a melody is? A hook, a song, like, then you got a great song. So for us, we're gonna try to write the best songs that we can, but we're always gonna write what it is we like, not what is hip or what is going on at the moment. We're gonna write the best songs that we feel are good, and those are our favorite songs, and we put them out to the world, and hopefully people like them. We're being, we try to be true to ourselves as artists. That's it. Very cool. Thank you so yeah. much, and uh, break a leg tonight. Thank you, man. Right on, brother. <laughs>